My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, I welcome you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Tonight's reflection will come from Gospel of Matthew, chapter 15, from verse 15 to 20. Gospel of Matthew, chapter 15, from verse 15 to 20. And the theme of our contemplation is Sweet Hearts. Sweet Hearts. Let us go into prayer. Loving Father, I, your word is seven, stand before your presence to welcome you in our midst with my whole heart. With our whole heart, we embrace your divine presence. With our whole heart, we worship you tonight. We adore you and glorify you, Lord. Sacred heart of Jesus, come and bless us tonight. Sacred heart of Jesus, come and comfort us tonight. Heal the wounded heart, craving and yearning for healing in many families. Sacred heart of Jesus, Heal the wounded hearts, crying for help in many places where they are walking. Sacred heart of Jesus, protect your people, being tortured and tormented by evil and wicked hearts. God, your heart is so sweet. Your heart is so precious. Because of love, for humanity, you created us in your own image and likeness. You made everything and handed everything to your creature. You say, man, conquer the earth. Man, increase and multiply. It is from your sacred heart. It's from your sweet heart. But look at our generation no wonder why Jesus said, this generation is a wicked generation. It's only you that knows the hearts of men and women. Your heart is so lovable, God. Your heart is so sweet. But look at your creatures. Some of us just reduce themselves to bestial life. Instinct has taken over many people and they no longer have compassionate hearts. Father, Abba Father, we call upon your sacred heart to bless our hearts tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Make it to be lovable again. Make it to be sweet again. Make it to be compassionate again. Remove the heart of stone and put the heart of flesh. Many families are suffering because they, they no longer enjoy lovable hearts. Some people call themselves sweethearts, but I don't know how sweet the heart is now. Some people call themselves honey, but I don't know how honey the heart is. Father, bless those whose sweet heart are still sweet hearts. In the mighty name of Jesus. Bless those who are still honey to themselves. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, heal the betrayed and the wounded hearts. Heal our families. From family we get our priests and religious, presidents and many noble men and women. When family is scattered, what else remains, Father? When families are scattered, the world will be in top set of it. Father, abide in us and help us to abide in you. For apart from you, we can do nothing. Oh, immaculate heart of Mary, intercede for your children. 
O Immaculate Heart of Mary, sever your children tonight. The two hearts of love, Jesus and Mary, teach us how to think good about our brothers and sisters. Make our hearts to be sweet again. Make our hearts to imitate your hearts. Two hearts of Jesus and Mary are in our midst, child of God. It is the Lord that searches every heart. So, child of God, at this moment, present before the Lord what is in your heart. Talk to Jesus and Mary tonight. They are the sweetest heart we know. No deceit is in their heart. No wonder why Jesus always is calling us. Come to me, all that overburdened, and I will give you rest. It is only one that has such a compassionate heart that will give you that invite. Jesus is inviting us tonight to present our wounded hearts. Talk to Jesus at this hour, child of God. Present to Jesus your problem. What is bothering you in your heart and mind? Present it to Jesus now. Taking deep breath, that child of God. Taking deep breath and breathe out. Relax your nerves. When I come into your presence, I'm so happy. When I come into your presence, I'm so glad. For in your presence, there is a night in, and the Spirit of the Lord stood on me. In your presence, anointing breaks to you. Send us your healing, we pray thee, O oh Lord. Send us your healing, we say, man. Our hearts need your favor, we pray thee, O oh Lord. Our hearts need your healing. We say, Amen. Abba Father. Abba Father. Come to us. Sacred heart of Jesus. Come to us. Immaculate heart of Mary. Possess our heart. Intercede for us. Make our hearts like unto yours. Make our hearts like unto you. Your heart is so peaceful. There is serenity in your heart. No stress. No tension. No higgledy piggledy. Father, I thank you for allowing us to call your name. Make our hearts like unto you. Sweet heart. Precious heart. That loves his children. That loves her children. What a wonderful heart. Even when we are told, Mother Mary, that a sword will pierce your heart. You continue to ponder it in your heart. How many people will be able to handle that sword that pierces heart every day in our families? Many things are puncturing your heart. Look at our mother Mary. She brought her own child in the temple. And the first presence 
first message was that a sword will pierce your heart. Because of what? The salvific mission of Jesus. Jesus was on a mission. I came to my own people. My own people rejected me. What have I done to you? You'll be looking at your brother. You'll be looking at your sister. And your sister or your brother will think that your heart is saying the same thing. But your heart is only planning evil. And your face is saying some other thing. Your mouth is saying some other thing. What do you gain? What do you gain, child of God? Why do you allow the devil to use you against your brother or your sister? What do you gain in scattering your family? You plant evil in your heart and your siblings are suffering. You plant evil in your heart and your friends are suffering. You wish them dead. You wish them suffering. To suffer and to suffer what you gain. Don't you know that when you are sleeping, God can say, I want your soul tonight. What will you do? May preaching. And God will just be merciful to you. Because his God, God's heart is so sweet. God's heart is so merciful. Even the wicked people will be praying in their hearts to be alive, to plan and execute their wicked plan against their brothers or sisters or their neighbor or friend or in-laws. And God allowed it and allowed them to rejoice in their wickedness. When they finish then God will do what he did to Cain to them. God comes in when they, has, they, they love life. The way God thinks is different from the way we think. Some people say, God, why? God's ways are not our ways. Who can cancel the Lord? Who can advise him? It is only prayer that governs God. God governs the world. Prayer changes things. And prayer governs God. Knock at his door in prayer. Jesus has given us expo in Matthew 7, 7. Ah! Seek, knock, and the door will open. That was the greatest expo from the heart of Jesus. The formula to come to them. Even when we think that they delay, they know, they hear us, they understand that we live there. But they do it at their own time. You'll be saying like a child, I want it now. And the parents will say, later. You cry like a child, and then you go and sleep. You wake up, and you'll be fine. Sometimes you forget what you were asking for. At the proper time, your parents will give you that toy. At the proper time, your parents will bring that pizza you are looking for. At the proper time, your parents will take you to the Disney World. But they are teaching you how to be patient. 
Abba Father, I pray tonight that every evil heart that is planning evil against your children must repent in the mighty name of Jesus. If evil hearts do not repent, they will face the wrath of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Every evil heart in your area of work must repent or face the wrath of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Every evil heart against you or your family must repent tonight or face the wrath of God. For God of vengeance will crush every heart that is torturing and tormenting the children of the light in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, we present before you Mazen and the canon whose heart is full of freedom for his people. He revealed that enemies were coming in many ways and people did not understand him. And now the invaders are coming. They are in our midst. And now now our people are realizing what this young man saw. And we did not say. Father, protect him in the prison yard. And many I put people that we are incarcerated. Bless their food. Bless the drink they drink. Bless every medication they give them. We don't know what they are giving them in form of medication. Father, let your angel do that same work that they did when Paul and Silas were in prison. Protect them. Grant them bail. Free them, Father. Look at the birds of the air. Nobody disturbs them. They are free born citizens. They don't have green cards. They don't have citizenship passport. And they are free to go anywhere. Can imagine seeing a baby. Looking for where to repent. Even in their own land, they are not safe. Father, Father, continue to protect your children. Extend this protection and blessing to many Christians that are suffering because they are Christians, because of their faith. Father, deliver them. Let their faith in you not be in vain. Father, protect them. Change the hearts of wicked presidents and rulers, torturing and tormenting the poor in our midst. Exodus 22 from verse 22 to 23 says, If you torture and torment the stranger or the orphans among you, if I hear their cry, I will fight for them. Father, fight for the strangers. Father, fight for the power, fatherless and motherless. The hour has come for it to liberate them from this captivity. Abba, Father, we have no other person other than you. When people are torturing and tormenting your people, they're asking us, where is your God? But we know that we have living God. We have a living God. Very compassionate. May our hopes not be hopeless. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Child of God, how are you tonight? Take a deep breath and breathe out. Husband and wife, say to your husband, say to your wife, my sweetheart, Yes, say it to your husband, say it to your wife. And maintain it. God bless your sweetheart in the mighty name of Jesus. It is good to be godly. God created us to know Him, to love Him, to be with Him, both here on earth 
and eternity. But we have to start from here. You have to be natural before supernatural. If you don't love your brother or your sister you are seeing with your own eyes, how can you love the invisible God? When you see that invisible God, will you, able to, will you be able to recognize him? That's why Jesus was able to help us to do charity. I was hungry, you fed me. Naked, you clothed me. Imprisoned, you visited me. But many wicked people are uh, putting the wicked, the, the only innocent ones in the prison. They are taking away their lands and properties because they don't have anybody to fight for them. Jesus said, do not be afraid of the one that kills the flesh. But be afraid of the one that kills both the flesh and the soul and put it in Gehenna. Judas was plotting evil against Jesus. Jesus knew the wicked plot of Judas in his heart. Jesus knew when he executed it. Jesus knew everything. Why didn't Jesus stop him? You know, when, when people are saying, God, God, are you alive? God, are you dead? God, why are, are you here? God, why do I allow anything to happen? Are you sleeping? Jesus was in the world. Jesus knew about Judas. Jesus was even, he did fasting and prayer 40 days and 40 nights. He fasted in the desert. And eventually, Judas was among his 12 apostles. Did God make mistake? Did God make mistake? Everything is for a teaching moment in our life. God allows many things. To teach us in our own generation. That even in the church. There are good people and evil people. But you have to be wise as serpent. And as innocent as dove. You have to be wise as serpent. And as innocent as dove. When Judas' heart was plotting evil against Jesus. Jesus knew his wicked plan. Judas did not, did not see it coming. That when Jesus was saying, one of you will betray me, <laughs> he was even saying, not I, surely, not I, surely. But Jesus knew. Jesus did not even call his name. He said, one of you. So as to give him opportunity to repent. But he hardened his heart. Eventually, he was doomed. The worst thing was that he did not even enjoy the money. He did not even enjoy the money. He was so overwhelmed with his evil intent and action that he went and hung himself. Child of God, whatever evil plan you have against your brother or your sister, drop it tonight. Whatever evil plot against your friend or neighbor, drop it tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. It doesn't give you any, any room to be longer in your life or to be successful. Drop it tonight, child of God. If someone is against you, allow God to fight your battle. He will do it very well. Look at Joseph. God blessed Joseph in the land of slavery. The brothers plot evil against him. They even wanted to kill him. Joseph did not even know what his brothers were planning for him. And they sold him 
for few chains, chicken chains, evil hearts of siblings, wicked hearts of men and women. It did not start today. But every action has a repercussion. Every evil action has a repercussion. God will say each one according to your deeds. Allow God to fight your battle. When they plotted against Joseph, God elevated his status in the land of slavery. God made him in charge of the household. And there was famine. And that drew their own brother to where he, they sold their brother. God has sense of humor. Sometimes your enemy will think that he, he or she has done the work. But God will just be watching two of you. The stone which the builders rejected has become the corner story. There was a young man that was always bullying his classmates. Every time he was bullying his classmates. Every time you get first position, every time first position. Every time this, this guy will be knocking the head of this child, giving him a knock on the head. Out of envy. So one day, this bully, this man that always bully him, fall sick did not go to school. Guess who visited him? The poor man came to the place where they live and said he was looking for his classmate. Hmm. When this man saw the young man that he always bullied, he started crying. Upon all I did to you, you didn't see me in class and you came to know what was going on. He said, because I did not see you to bully me today. I, I said, what's going on? And he saw the bully, the man that used to bully him, was helpless. Vomiting. Because he was very sick and feverish. You know, sometimes when you are, when you are torturing an innocent man or woman, is his or her own God will fight the battle. Guess what he did for him? He taught him everything he missed in the class for that week. He was able to write his notes and brought it to him. He repaired him with goodness. He repaired him with goodness. Good heart. Every good tree bear good fruit. But bad tree bears bad fruit. And that goodness the young man showed to this wicked man made him to repent and they became friends. Am I talking to someone tonight? What about you? What is your plan tonight? And that will bring us to the reflection of tonight. Matthew chapter 15 from verse 15 to 19. Matthew chapter 15 from verse 15 to 19. And the precise leaf 19, uh, 15 to 20. Matthew chapter 15 from verse 15 to 20. And I read. Peter said to him, explain this parable to us. Do you still not understand? Jesus asked. Do you not yet realize 
that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and then is eliminated. But the things that come out of the mouth come from the heart. And these things defile a man. Verse 19. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, and slander. These are what defile a man. But eating with unwashed hands does not defy him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Child of God, just listen to the word of God talk to us. Jesus explained parables to the apostles and asked them, do you still not understand that what goes through the mouth goes into the stomach and then is created. But the things that come out of the mouth come from the heart. Just as I was explaining to you prior to reading this gospel message. You don't know what your brother or your sister is planning for you. You don't know what your friend is planning for you. You will see that friend. Oh, he said, that's my best friend. He thinks well of me. Oh, he is my good heart. He is your sweetheart. He is your honey, whatever. I pray that what he or she is saying, that will match the sense in the heart. What are you planning for your children? What are the children planning for their parents? What are you planning for your siblings? Siblings, what are you planning for each other? What are you planning for your neighbor? Neighbors, what are you planning for your neighbors? This message is for everybody. In-laws, what are you planning for your in-laws? Book of Proverbs, chapter 4, from the chapter 3, says, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. It's your heart pure. It's your heart pure. If you have to, do not allow anybody to pollute your heart. The worst thing you ever do is to allow somebody to plant evil in your heart and you follow the person to execute evil against your brother or your sister, against innocent man or woman. How can you make your heart to be a dumping ground for wickedness? devil is a liar. I pray that you, Lord, clean your heart tonight. You never plan evil against your brother or your sister in your area of work in the mighty name of Jesus. You never fight your brother or your sister for no just cause in the mighty name of Jesus. You never plot evil against your brother or your sister in your family in the mighty name of Jesus. You never plot evil with outside people to destroy your family in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, purify our hearts and minds. Purify our hearts and minds. That we shall think well of one another in the mighty name of Jesus. Child of God, say amen. Book of Proverbs, chapter 27, verse 19 says, As water reflects the face, so one's life reflects the heart. As water reflects the face, when you look at the water, you see your, the image, you see your face in the water. 
And the Bible says, so one's life reflects the way your heart is. One's life reflects the way your heart is. Our people used to say, when a child talks, you know, he sees her own age. What a poor kwama kuchir. They will know your age. They will know your capacity, what you can do, whether you are intelligent or what, whether you can coordinate, how you can reason and so on. What are you thinking? Is it evil or good? When God is planning good for your brothers and sisters, when God is planning good things for, for his children, you are there scattering God's plan. Don't you know that you are God's plan? Everybody in this life, God has a plan for you. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. He has a good plan for you. Plan to prosper. And you destroy the handwork of God. What will you tell God? Of course, some people don't even believe in God. That's why they kill, they maim. They cause, they cause want someone to be crying all the time. Inflicting pain to family. They don't care. Jeremiah chapter 17 from verse 9 to 10 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind to reward each person according to their conduct, according to what their deeds deserve. Look at that. Jeremiah 17, 9 to 10. When you are planning even against your brother or your sister, don't you know that the heart is like the engine of a car? And somebody designed that engine. Somebody constructed the engine and made it the way it will be working. And he understands the secret thoughts of men and women. First Peter chapter 3 from the 3 to 4 says, your beauty should not come from outward adornment. Such as an elaborate, elaborate hairstyles and the wearing of gold jewels or fine clothes. Rather, it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. All that glitters is not gold. You don't judge a book by the cover. But what if the other way around? Your outward appearance very clean. It's like uh, the, 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 the cups and the coffin. What is inside the coffin? It's going to the graveyard. Come to that graveyard after 10 days. But you see a beautiful coffin. All these things will remind us that we shall not be forever in this world. Have a good heart for your brother. Have a clean heart for your sister. Have a clean heart for your brother. Have a clean heart for your sister. Is your heart clean? Is it so sweet as you say it? Is your heart so pure for your brother to understand you? Or your sisters to understand you? Or your brother or your sister to trust you? Why would you tell your brother, give me money, I will give it back to you. And it will take months, years. And all of a sudden, you want to take the whole money. I'm just giving you an example. You are borrowing something from your brother. You are borrowing something from your sister. 
And all of a sudden, you change your mind. You want to accept the money. God is watching us. God is watching us. God is watching us from a distance. Two hearts. Two hearts and clean spirits. Who see the Lord. Who shall climb the mountain of the Lord? Two hearts and clean spirits. Book of Psalm 51, verse 10 says, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Book of Psalm 51, verse 10. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. It's a seventh prayer of David. Because David knew that his heart was not clean. He killed somebody's husband and then and took the wife. Killed somebody's husband and took the wife. And God said, if you needed other women, I would have given you. Why will you tamper with the only only wife of this man? Not only that he took the wife of Uriah, he also plotted that Uriah will be killed in the battlefield. You see how the heart works? How wicked heart works? Evil begets evil. Evil begets evil. When you are in need, you come to your friend, you come to your brother, and I borrow this money, I will give it to you. Can you borrow? I will give it to you. Absolutely, within one week, within one month, I will give it to you. Two years, three years, four years. God sees everything. And God knows everything. Book of Psalm 20 verse 4 says, May he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. Look at that. Book of Psalm 20 verse 4. Book of Psalm 20 is a, is a psalm, psalm of prayer. If you are asking God for anything, just say Psalm 20. And allow Psalm 20 to talk to you. And verse 4 says, May he give you the desire of your heart. And make all your plans, all, not some, all your plans succeed. I know this is the kind of prayer you would love to, have to pray. And you just want God to do it for you. And so shall it be, child of God, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Say amen, child of God. God will grant it to you in the mighty name of Jesus. On your foot, cheer You come to God in prayer. And God will answer you. Jeremiah 29 verse 13 says, You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Chinekindu <laughs> me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. First Samuel chapter 16 verse 7 says, 
But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the the Lord looks at the heart. Look at that. Outward appearance can deceive you. But what is in your heart? Only God knows. You may deceive your brother or your sister, but you cannot deceive God. And what's there if you want to deceive a child of God? Your innocent brother or your sister. Because he or she is a prayerful woman. A prayerful man. Yeah, you, you take advantage of him or her. Because he or she is a prayerful man, a prayerful woman, and is so gullible. And you take advantage of him or her. God, may, God doesn't waste time. He, he doesn't manipulate such people. If they're angry and talk to God, hmm, you won't know what you do to yourself. Pray that they're not angry. Book of Proverbs, chapter 3, from verse 5 to 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. Trust in the Lord with your whole heart, and lean not on your own understanding. You know, sometimes uh, we think that we are wiser than God. God is God. God is God. God is God. Forever. Amen. Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. In other words, no distraction. When you are in the presence of the Lord, no distraction. Our God is a jealous God. Our God is a jealous God. That's why I love all of you here. You know that we have appointment with God. Even many people are calling in from their area of work tonight. Many that came back for work, in spite of the, of the fact that you are tired, you are logged into prayer. It has become part and parcel of you. Why wouldn't God love you? God will love you. In spite of the fact that Jesus said, take up your cross daily and follow me, he still understands your situation. You have to ask yourself, why am I still alive? In spite of the sickness I've been with for many years, why am I still struggling? And at the same time, I'm alive. You can't explain certain things. It's because of divine benevolence. God is very jealous. God is very, very jealous of us. Sometimes we think like human beings. And then in one of my retreats, I was telling the people, when God gives you good health, you forget about it. So he gives you a little sickness so that you, start, you continue to come to him. <laughs> and people laugh. God will give you one thing that will distract you and your family so that you continue to come to him. But there are some people that God already knows their heart. And they allow them to move around because even their word will not distract them. Even their, their good health will not destroy them. They still come and worship God. But there are people that even if, they, if you give them the wealth, if, they give the, if you give them whole health, they will forget about God. They come to God only when they are sick. 
You have such people. Yes, you are talking to. Yes, you know what I'm talking about. There are people when you give them that money, they forget about God. And they are, even their family. They start making trouble with their wife and their husband and their family. But when the person is sick, he says, Oh, please call the Father for me. Please book all the prayer warriors. Now I, 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 want, to be, I want to give my life to God. Why didn't you give your life to God when you were healthy? When you are full of your wealth and all those things? You know, sometimes God gives us tests. And some of us fail the test every year. You do resolution and you fail. Every resolution, you fail. Book of Psalm 37, verse 4 says, Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Let's go into prayer. Loving Father, I, your holy servant, stand before your presence to thank you. I am nothing. I don't know what is seven, Father. You made me your instrument. And I've come to give your children hope. I've come to give them hope and blessed assurance. Empower them, Father. And wisdomize them. With your spiritual synergy, fortify them. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26 says, A cheerful heart is good medicine. But a crushed spirit dries up the bones. But I let the bones rise again. Let your children rise again. Heal their wounded back. Heal my soul. Oh my God. Heal my heart. Light of God, I bless you with that. Psalm 147, verse 3. Be strong and take heart. All you who hope in the Lord, be strong and take heart. Psalm 31, verse 24 is talking to you tonight to be strong and take heart all you hope in the Lord. And Psalm 147, verse 3 is telling you that he has healed your broken heart. He has healed your broken heart and binds up your wounds. He has healed your broken heart and he has bind up your wounds. Psalm 147, verse 3 is telling you that God has healed your broken heart. And God is binding your wounds, child of God. God is binding your wounds. God is healing your broken heart. God is healing your broken heart. Psalm 147 verse 3. God is healing your broken heart. That's your heart that is wounded. God is healing you tonight at this hour. You will never remain the same after tonight's prayer. Taking deep breath, child of God, and breathe out. Yes, yes, yes. God is healing you. God is healing your heart. God is bringing back what was lost. That love will come back again in the mighty name of Jesus. That inner peace will come back again in the mighty name of Jesus. That protection you are looking for, spiritual protection, physical protection in your family, God will give it to you in the mighty name of Jesus. You are a man of peace. You are a woman of peace. That peace will come back again. That your troubled heart will be healed. God will ease up the tension in your family. God will ease up the tension in your family. God will ease up the tension in your family. Do not be depressed, child of God. Do not be depressed. That life that is meaningless will be meaningful in the mighty name of Jesus. God has remembered you, child of God. That hopelessness will go away. In the mighty name of Jesus, God is creating a pure heart and clean spirit for you. For you are a child of God. You are destined to succeed. Child of God, you are destined to succeed. That's your troubled heart. That's your wounded heart. is healed tonight. 
Healing is taking place, child of God. Healing is taking place at this moment. Claim me, child of God. Claim me, child of God. Sacred heart of Jesus. Look at sacred heart of Jesus. Look at the immaculate heart of Mary and be able to understand that they are talking to you in a mysterious way. Our mother Mary is interceding for you. Our mother Mary is interceding for you. Our mother Mary is interceding for you. Breathe life, child of God. For the favor of Mother Mary is favoring you tonight. She is full of grace. That heart of grace is blessing your own heart. That heart of grace is blessing your own heart. Child of God, breathe a sigh of relief. Breathe a sigh of relief. But Mother Mary is in your own house at this moment. She's blessing you through her powerful intercession. He said, all nations shall call me blessed. And when you are calling her blessed, she's interceding for you for blessedness to come to you. That grace of God will never depart from you. She's full of grace. She's full of grace. A heart full of grace will intercede for you to have grace upon grace in the mighty name of Jesus. When grace of God is filled in your heart, there will be no disgrace in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for that grace of God to, to, to encapsulate your being so that there will be no disgrace in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. That sacred heart of Jesus is blessing you tonight. That your high blood pressure will come down. That your low blood pressure will stabilize in the mighty name of Jesus. Doctors may have said something about your heart, but God is healing your own heart tonight. The heart of Jesus is healing your heart. That your irregular heartbeat will be regular again in the mighty name of Jesus. That your irregular heartbeat will be regular in the mighty name of Jesus. The sacred heart of Jesus, immaculate heart of Mary, they are pumping your heart to be stable in the mighty name of Jesus. Taking deep breath and breathe out and find solace to your heart. Jesus is ministering healing to that heart. When your doctor sees you, he says, Oh, everything is normal. Everything is normal. Everything is normal. In the mighty name of Jesus. That palpitation of the heart will be stabilized in the mighty name of Jesus. You will live long to see your grandchildren in the mighty name of Jesus. Child of God. Your stress is over. God will strengthen your business, both your online business and your business around the world. In the mighty name of Jesus. Calm down. Be still and know that you are a my leader. That problem in your office, God is taking care of. Do not be depressed anymore. Do not be depressed anymore, child of God. That trauma you have is, 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 all, is all over. God has taken control of your trauma. God has filled your child of God. Whatever that has been putting fear in your life, that phobia you are having, God is healing you tonight. Calm down. Calm down. God has remembered you. Why are you afraid? Yes, you, you are afraid. You are afraid of anywhere. You have been packing and repacking. You go from one end to the other. You change your job. You change your house. You pack everywhere. You are afraid of living somewhere. You are hearing voices. You are hearing voices. torturing and tormenting you. God is talking to you tonight. He's taking care of your hallucination in the mighty name of Jesus. God has come to liberate you from that captivity. Whoever that is tormenting you from anywhere, God will arrest the situation in the mighty name of Jesus. You will have inner peace of mind. You will be able to sleep and wake up full of life. Why will you be running away from your family? Why will you be running away from your, from your yard or your own flat? Devil is a liar. I come against those spirits. I come against those spirits. And they will go away from that place. That house belongs to you. Your house the house of rest. Not the house of torture. Father, Lord, I thank you. 
but you are taking control of your sinner tonight. You are protecting them. You are shepherding them. You are protecting them. You are fortifying their banner. Father, may your children find solace in you. Their heart that is troubled will no longer be troubled. Give them that gentle breeze. Breeze of blessing and grace and serenity in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.